Hey everybody, welcome back. This is applying assert arrays equal in the testing section of module two. So write an assert arrays equal function once more from memory. Uh, please do not paste it in from before. Okay, so we'll do that. And essentially what we're doing here, um, the only automated test will be one to ensure you've created a function. So same idea, not really much in terms of automated tests for these ones. The challenge you're correcting, this is two functions, map and cue ball. Uh, from the previous problem, map is another example of a higher order function, and it should behave similarly to the built-in method array.prototype.map. So, more or less, map is going to allow you to put an array and a function and get back a new array that is the result of applying that function to all of the elements in the array and then returning an array with all of that happening. So if you look at this, if we called map with an input array of 1, 2, and 3, and some kind of a function called add1, which if you remember from our sample of clean code structure or just think about it, Add one's going to take in a value and return that number plus one. So the output for the call to map is going to be this new array with two, three, and four. So one, add one to it, get two, two, same thing, get three, and so on. Excuse me. So then we're going to correct a cube all. <coughs> Jeez, Louise. <coughs> Excuse me. So with all that in mind, you will then correct cube all, a function which will make a call to map within it. So this is, again, one of the hardest problems that you're going to do in the entire prep course so far. And the reason is, is that not only are we building a function that is a higher order function, we're then going to use that higher order function to make another function do what it should. So cue ball is going to take an input array of 1, 2, and 3 and yield an output of 1, 8, 27. So essentially, we are mapping with a function that cubes things. So this is complicated. Don't worry if it takes you a long time to get this. You want to think that a problem like this is not, you're not to judge yourself on your ability to get it the first time. You want to judge your ability to increase your ability to get this problem the more times you do it. It sounds weird, but it's one of those where the fifth or fourth, or maybe even hopefully third, or hopefully not sixth time, but if it takes you six times, don't worry about it, time that you look at this, it's going to start to click. And uh, believe me, Whenever somebody says that, it's always kind of frustrating because it's like, oh God, what if it doesn't click? It's like, keep, keep doing it. it. It will click because you'd be amazed at how many things that you do in your life that are like this, which is to say you compartmentalize things that you do into like an overall function, even though inside of that there might be separate functions. Picture getting ready in the morning. There are lots of things that you do that involve complicated steps, but if you think about them all individually, it can be a daunting task. If you organize them together, you usually get things done more quickly in the morning. So anyway, aside from getting ready in the morning, we're going to go ahead and knock out a function or two. So we got a couple function definitions, one for map, one for cue ball that uses map. And we're introducing another thing, which is to say, instead of a callback function named the way that we did on the previous one, where we have this less than 10 and write less than 10 here, we could actually write indirectly the function itself. So you see how when we highlight this, it actually gives us the function we can write that directly here. So we could say function of a value and then what it's going to do is it's going to return that input val being less than 10. So we did nothing to this function. It does the exact same thing, but just instead of the name of the function, we actually wrote an anonymous function that does the same thing. So if we run this, we're gonna see that it passes in both cases. Now, if you didn't have this saved from last time, don't worry about that. A lot of what we're doing here is just trying to demonstrate new principles and new concepts. So, mm, that's the wrong one. Although we could have a look for map in here. Mm, Map.prototype. Ah, not a good search term. So we'll say array map. Array.prototype.map. The map method creates a new array with the results of calling a provided function on every element in the array. Uh, don't worry about this, it's something called an arrow function. It's <laughs> honestly mildly irresponsible in my view, but that's okay. It probably isn't. I'm just a curmudgeon, which is somebody who gets attached to things they learn the first time. Arrow functions are cool. There's just some things that happen inside of them that are different enough that for you all watching this, I would avoid them for the time being. Um, but you know, certainly don't have to. So let's come over here. I believe we had copied all of this. Did we yet? No, let's copy all of this. Put it over in our replit. Okay, two functions. Both of them are going to be returning arrays. So we need an assert arrays equal function. 
So we're going to write it from scratch. Assert arrays equal. It's going to take in an actual array, an expected array, and a test name. If you want to be mildly lazy, you can certainly stringify both of these. We had you not stringify them in the previous examples just because it's good to think about how to compare two arrays, but you can here. I'm not going to. I'm going to, ooh, should we use every? Nah, let's not use every. So let's say variable has same values is equal to true. We're going to iterate over one of them. Mm -hmm. And essentially, if we ever have a situation where they don't match, if the current value in actual is not equal to the corresponding value in expected, we're going to do two things. We're going to say has same values is equal to false, and we're going to break the for loop. Oh boy, too, too much. The next one is going to be has same lengths. And that's just going to be equal to actual dot length directly compared with the expected length. If they have the same length, this expression here is going to be true. If they don't, then it won't. At which point, we're going to compare both of those. We're going to say if they have the same values and they have the same length, then we know that the two input arrays are equal. So we'll say, uh, what will we say? Console dot log passed. Otherwise, we know they are not. And we're going to do that fun little string that we keep doing where it's like failed plus the test name plus the closing square brackets expected plus we're not going to put the double quotes there plus expected. It's like, why aren't we putting the double quotes? It's like, I just feel like I'm going to mess it up. Expected what we got, and then comma, but got space plus actual. Okay. So now for our test cases. Our test cases are going to come in two very distinct categories because we have two functions to test. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to test our map function. For our map function to be tested properly, we need an array and we need a callback function. So doesn't make a ton of sense to go that far off of the beaten path, so let's make our test function, sorry, not our test function, our callback function for testing map, we'll make it add one. Add one's going to take in a value, and it's going to return that value plus one. We're also going to need an input array, so we'll say input is equal to, mm, input's a bad one, we'll say, mm, we're going to say input, but we're going to feel bad about doing it. Anyway, Input is equal to one, two, three. The reason we're going to feel bad is because we're going to have another input later. So let's say input for map. And we won't feel as bad. So now we're going to make a call to map and save the result as an actual value. So we'll say actual map is equal to our call to map, which is a function. Input for map is going to be the first argument. And add one is going to be the second. So if we look up at map, map takes an array and it takes a callback function. And you'll notice one thing. We haven't really looked at what map does yet, and that's on purpose. We don't really care yet. We know what it should do, and that allows us to write our test function, or sorry, that allows us to create an assertion function, assert arrays equal, and it also allows us to write a couple test cases because we know what should be coming back. So actual map should be something like expected map is equal to each one of these values with one added to them. So this is what we should be getting, <coughs> excuse me, this is what we should be getting back from map. This is what we actually get back from map. So if we come down here and we call our assert arrays equal function, it's going to take its first parameter as actual map, which is the result of calling the function, expected map, which is what we expect, and something like should correctly map elements of an array. I'm not great at test names. Essentially, if your test name gives you a good idea of what the test is doing, it's a good test name. There's more on that in the reference answers and documentation section at the end of module two. And so if you'd like to, please feel free to go there and do a little bit of research about it. So, third array is equal, actual map, expected map. So let's go ahead and run this, and this will be our test case for map. Ooh, element is not defined. Perfect. 
at map eval machine dot anonymous 644 at readable chunk stream push oh boy so how do we look at this and find out where in our code we did something wrong so let's go ahead and read all the way through here REPL.js 116 at 5 numbers are a little bit high map at 6 anything on line 6 there is so on line 6 element so it looks like at line 6 about 44 characters in we have a problem because we've written element here and element is not defined so if we think about it we're probably trying to apply the callback function to every element of the input array but instead of element we don't have anything called element so we're going to need to do one of two things one would be to realize what element probably should be which if we think about it it's probably array at i so we could either change that here or create an alias which would be to say variable element is equal to array at i so if we do that element is now defined by what we think it should be because the callback function for map is going to be applied to every element of the array a for loop gives us the ability to look at every element and on line six we're creating a new alias just a name for, for something else and we're setting element equal to the current value in the array which I think should sort out at least this error so let's go ahead and run this again cool so we're moving in the right direction failed should correctly map elements of an array expected two three four which that's actually what an array is going to look like when we when we output it but got 234 so that's a problem right so what I think we should do let's go ahead and console.log new array new array is where we're going to be putting all of this stuff so let's have a look at what it looks like so if we run this eventually we'll see that failed thing it starts as an array and then it becomes two now I'm not entirely sure if two is part of an array or if it's not so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let's have a look at the type of sorry not type of we'll say array dot is array of new array at each point because at some point it's changing from an array which is what we want to not an array which is not what we want so let's run that so it starts as an array and it immediately gets turned into something other than an array and you might be thinking hey I know what's going on which is awesome because that's basically what we need to do here what we're doing is we're applying the callback function to the element and then so we'll say apply callback function then store result in new array so let's let's do this rather verbosely we'll say result is equal to callback function on element and then we want to take that result and add it to new array so this is not how we do that line 9 would only work if we were working with numbers and actually JavaScript is like that and thinks that you meant numbers and actually changes it for you which is why a lot of people complain about JavaScript but we are stalwart in our resolve and we know that we need to use push rather than adding it to it so if we push we'll push the result in so now that rather than new array is equal to new array plus callback function on element we're going to say variable result is equal to callback function on element and then new array dot push of that result so if we run this one passed excellent we now can assume that map works well enough for us to start trying to figure out how cue ball works so cue ball is supposed to use map and a, and, a, and a callback function to cube all of the numbers and then return those numbers in an array so we'll need a couple of things so our test case is for map and then down here we'll have our test cases for cube all so variable input for cube all is going to be one we'll say three and five variable actual cube all is going to be equal to cube all the function we're writing on the input for cube all variable expected cue ball is equal to now this is what we think we should get so one cubed is one three cubed is 27 and five cubed is 125 so we have our input we have a call to cue ball we have an expected value that we should get back now we're going to call our assert equals or sorry assert arrays 
equal. And if you're doing this and this highlights down here, I think you can hit tab and it'll complete it for you. You may not want to get too attached to that kind of tab complete stuff just because the interview itself usually isn't on something like Replit. A lot of times it's on something different. But if it is on Replit and you can tab to complete, my opinion is that it's easier to adapt yourself to hitting tab complete than it is to adapt yourself away from it. If you're used to hitting tab complete on all of your variables after you've written them once, you might run into problems if you're on a code editor where that's not happening by default. So assert array is equal is going to take in the actual cue ball result. And to be sure, there's probably a setting that I can hit to get rid of all of this. Um, I'm not going to just because, well, I don't have a good reason. So if you check back on a later one of these videos, and I am, that's because I've realized I don't have a good reason to keep these here. Anyway, should correctly cube all elements of an array. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and hit run. First one's going to pass. The second one's going to fail. Expected 127.25, but we got 1925.00. Now, it may not be immediately obvious, but for those of you who have done enough math to see this, what we have here is an incorrect function inside of map. Because we're getting an array, it has the same length, but the problem is, is that the values are different. 1 is correct, 27 should be, sorry, 9 should be 27. But if you look at that, 9 is actually 3 squared. And the same thing for 25, 25 is 5 squared. So whereas we should be cubing these numbers, we are squaring them. So let's roll on up to our cue ball function. Cue ball return map on the numbers. So we're calling map on the numbers. And we have a function n return n times n. Ah, there is our issue. n times n is not how you cube a number. n times n times n is how you cube a number. So now that we've adjusted that inconsistency, let's go ahead and roll back down, run our tests again. And we're correct. One of the things that you might consider doing is that, remember on the square function where we tested a bunch of different cases for everything? That same kind of reasoning can be applied to both of these. Now I'm going to leave them as is, and it's because, oh, I don't know, something about good programmers being lazy or some other kind of thing that can justify my not having to do all of that. But what you might want to do is to figure out other cases that could be useful to ensure that they work before you would, let's say, push your cue ball and your map functions to production. But for our purposes, we're going to finish up there. Let's go ahead and highlight all of this, copy it, move back over here. And again, all this is going to do is be like, hey, congratulations, you have an assert arrays equal function if you do have one. There's all of our code. If we look back at the replit, you can see how it's nice and organized. We have the function definitions. We have the assertion function that we want to use based on those function definitions return values. And then we have a couple of test cases where we're proving each one of those works. So if we come back here and we hit run test, it's going to say correct. But I think it just says correct because we have an assert arrays equal function. So if I run this without anything in there, provided that you actually have an assert arrays equal function, the automated test will work. But again, most of the work that we'd like to see you getting done on this is the reasoning and the building and the tinkering with the functions that you do, uh, usually in something like Replit. So you can see like the output over here. But that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching. And actually, let's go ahead and put that back. No, no use having bad code in there is the last thing that we ran. Oh boy, oh boy, what did I do? Back up. Ah, okay, so that, that returned it to what it was. Cool. That's, by the way, that's Command-Z. That's usually undo. We'll move you back in a back-ass operating system. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.